can't stop me, I brought my rap. Can't stop me, I make you feel my rap. Can't stop me, I brought my flow. Can't stop me, better act like you know. They post their exploits nearly every weekend. Proud, it seems, of their sliding and screeching. The police chases. Even the injuries that play out on social media for all to see. As street racers and law enforcement set up on a collision course of sorts, stuck on repeat. Alpha News rode along on a recent weekend with an undercover team to record what's become an all too predictable and dangerous pattern. And there's not much in Minnesota um, that's going to deter them. It's just after 10 on a Saturday night when we take off with the undercover carjacking auto theft team from the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. While it's Minneapolis that sees most of the meetups and intersection takeovers, it's law enforcement from across the metro monitoring their movements. Uh, you just kind of wait for the activity and uh, base your enforcement off that. Deputy Thomas Siegelstrom explains that on this night, that activity will begin at the Minneapolis Farmer's Market. Yeah, it is basically the meetup spot. Got the nice view of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's downtown Minneapolis right there. A documentary from inside the takeover scene released just days ago explains the draw to that space. But VIP, this is the section right here, okay? I need all my VIP on this side, okay? It's 11 o'clock now on our ride along when we count more than 50 cars in the farmer's market lot awaiting the first sliding location. We're asked to keep our cameras down as we drive in the middle of the pack to be able to blend in with the lineup. Theoretically, they shouldn't jump on the freeway to get to this place. That place is less than two miles from the farmer's market, the 2200 block of North 2nd Street. They're obviously looking where no heat is, right? Um, tend, yeah, they tend to go to industrial places, you okay. know, not, not a lot of visible, not a lot of lights. So that's a spotter. Spotters are the first to set up at a location to keep people out who aren't a part of the pack. It takes just a few minutes for the cars to fan out and take their positions around the intersection. This is the view from a law enforcement drone flying overhead undetected. We tune in live from a nearby parking lot. For nearly two minutes, one car burns rubber as tires smoke for the crowd. Then state patrol squads move in to push the cars out. We walk over to see what property owners tell us is thousands of dollars in damage to the road. A security camera from February rolled as racers poured gasoline on Cedar and Franklin and set it on fire. When George Floyd passed away, that's when most of our city got burnt down. That's when the takeover scene really started to amp up. As this has all dragged on for so long on such a large scale, the sliders maintain they'd like some sort of legal track to do this. Law enforcement doesn't seem convinced that would change behaviors, believing the thrill of the chase is what many are after. You could have two locations with well over 100 cars at each one, um, and that becomes hectic once they leave, because when they leave, they're not following the driving conduct of a normal person. Well, these guys are gone. Yeah. They're speeding, uh, running red lights, driving in packs, and driving with no regard of public safety at all. Trooper 8's uh, got the orange charger at McDonald's. Watch this never-before-seen chase from April unfold from a state patrol helicopter. Uh, you might be able to box him in there in the drive through It's close to 1 a.m. on a Sunday on what the street racers advertised as their season opener weekend. At one point, Ramsey County's CAT team has the driver pulled over in St. Paul. Vehicle fleeing eastbound suburban from Burns. Until that driver decides to speed off. For more than a half hour, the helicopter stays with him. Ten four westbound in the Lowry Hill Tunnel. Known for fleeing and weapons at 118. You know, he had to have been going in excess of 120, 130 miles an hour at one point uh, in his charger. Uh, took us all the way from St. Paul down past the airport into Minneapolis, downtown Minneapolis. The driver ditches his car when he runs out of gas in the North Loop. He bails and tries to hide. One, two, bailing. I'm sticking with the driver. Three, bailing. Trooper 8, I believe I have him hiding behind a dumpster here. Eventually running under a parked car. I believe he is hiding behind the passenger side of a Jeep Wrangler parked on 4th Street. When a deputy arrives, Devontae Eaton comes out with his hands up. He came out. Squads are making contact. 
he could have very well struck and killed somebody. He was released not shortly after that. In fact, it's just two days later and Eaton is out without bail. They make it seem like we're a bad, like we're a bad thing because this like, this is like our outlet to let our anger out and stuff like that. This is him weeks later in that documentary. I'm not part of that system. All I can do is enforce the laws that are uh, made and you just deal with it. If, you know, if he's out there doing that type of illegal activity again, all I can do is be there to catch him. Back to our ride along. Over the next few hours, we see at least five drivers connected to the group pulled over at different scenes. Some for going more than 100 miles an hour, others for fleeing police, and another is in a stolen car. As an officer, right, it's all about numbers for safety, getting caught in the mix with 100 uh, people that are not happy to see you. Um, we try to avoid that. Without the manpower or a large-scale surprise operation, Deputy Siegelstrom believes these scattered arrests are about all they can manage. The entire night of our ride-along is a series of five stops with the group, all a few miles apart and all in Minneapolis. Ramsey County, they're, they're not allowed here. They're, you know, it's been very clear that they're not going to set up and do that type of stuff in Ramsey. We head back when the group breaks up at 2 a.m. Our team relieved to see a larger police presence than in weeks past. They're starting to come in a lot stronger. They're trying to issue felony criminal damage to property. You know, they're, they're not playing no more. Come to the point where it's got to end. So now you got uh, metro wide teams trying to combat this. Uh, 604, they're taking them into custody. Uh, nice work, trooper. Street racers have been connected to deadly crashes in the metro in the last two years. And last summer, two teenagers lost their lives from stray bullets connected to the events in Minneapolis. No arrests have been made in either of those cases. You can't stop me, dog. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me. You can't stop me, dog. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me.